Hello, and welcome to the Knitting with Cat Hair podcast. Buckle up, because this one's going to be a long one. So today I thought that I would not only go over my usual finished objects and works in progress and dream knitting, but that I would also take the time to show you each and every project that I have currently in the works. So yeah, it's going to take a little bit of time. Alrighty. So first off, my name is Nikki. I am also known as Knitting with Cat Hair on Instagram and Cat Hair Knitting on Ravelry. I'm coming to you from Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, where I live with my partner, our two daughters, and our five cats, hence the name of the podcast, as I'm always finding cat hair in my knitting. I'd like to welcome back all returning viewers and a big warm welcome to all new viewers. I've had quite a few new subscribers as of late, so I just want to welcome you and I hope that you do find this podcast interesting and inspiring. I hope it, it gives you some ideas for your knitting. So I'm just going to jump right on into things because it's going to be a long one. Um, just to let you know, I am running a Marie Wallen make along over on Instagram. All of the details can be found in the description box below or over on my Instagram account. Um, it's ending August 1st of this year. So still plenty of time to join in. So with that, I'm going to jump on in and I will talk about what I'm wearing, which is also my very first finished object. So today, finally, I'm wearing my finished daffodil by Marie Wallen. And that pattern is found in her springtime collection book. But you can buy the pattern individually. Heads up, not size inclusive. I made the extra large size, which accommodates a 44 to 46 inch bust. And I think it only goes up. There's only one size larger, I believe. So really not size inclusive. So I will just stand up so you can get a look at it. I'm wearing it today just over top of my linen dress. Um, and it's now been washed and blocked. And all of the ends have been woven in. I'm pretty sure I woven all of the ends. Um, so you might notice that I'll pop in a picture of the original design. Mine is a modified version because I've chosen to omit the long sleeves. So I've just done short sleeves here. As you can see, it's a drop shoulder construction. So really all I did was I knit the two front, the two panels, the front and the back. It's knit um, flat and then seamed together. So I just knit those two and then I picked up and did some ribbing around the armholes. Now I think I may have blocked the armholes too large because I don't know. I don't, I liked, <laughs> I liked it better before I blocked it actually. It's creating a bit of a little point that sticks out. Anyways, um, I have a few things to say about this. So I knit this up out of Holst Garn Super Soft, which is a 50% merino, 50% Shetland fingering weight yarn that's from Denmark. It's an extremely affordable yarn. Um, do I have my cone? Anyways, I bought a cone of it, so it's like an excessive amount of yarn. I barely even dented it. I think I definitely didn't even get to the halfway mark. So I held it single strand. And I've mentioned this numerous times in the past, but it did shrink after washing. It's the only yarn I'm aware of that's ever shrunk on me. Um, it's not a super wash yarn. It's 100% wool. And yeah, I think it has something to do with the spinning oil in it. Maybe once you kind of wash it out, it has a lot of spinning oil in it. So once you wash it out, I'm thinking the yarn plumps up. It definitely gets so softer, although I wouldn't say that this is a, a soft yarn. It's not a merino by any means. Um, it's still like, I can wear it next to skin, no problem. Um, but I, I think I have a pretty high tolerance to the itch factor. So yeah, actually Amelia from the Amelia Style podcast, which is a wonderful podcast. And if you haven't seen it before, I highly recommend you check her out. She's always making something beautiful. Um, she finished 
a yellow cardigan by Marie Wallen for our make along as well. And she noted she knitted out of Hoskarn Super Soft and she noted that some of the colors shrunk and others didn't. So mm, I don't know. I don't know what that means. It means that you need to do a test swatch and wash and block it <laughs> before you knit with this yarn. Even if you've knit with it before because apparently different colors behave differently. So just a heads up there. Uh, in terms of needles, I used US1, which is a 2.25 millimeter needle for the ribbing, for all of the ribbing. And then I used a US2 2.75 millimeter needle for the rest of the body, for the lace and cables. And um, what else did I do here? In terms of the construction, as I mentioned, it's knit flat in, in pieces. So you do the front and the back separately. It starts bottom up and then you go ahead and seam the shoulders. So I used, um, oh, you can see, I used backstitch to seam my shoulders for the first time. I've never used backstitch before. I don't prefer it. I think mattress stitch is my go-to. Um, I just find it turns out a little nicer. So I use mattress stitch on this side seams. We can see there. I don't know. It just turned out better for me. So what I did was I seamed the one shoulder and then I went ahead and picked up and I did all around the collar, the neck ribbing. And then I went ahead and seamed the other shoulder. And I think I started from the sleeve up. Um, and then when I was doing the armholes, so you do that first. And then I just measured eight inches down um, from the from the top of the shoulder down. I measured eight inches and I put a little marker, like a stitch marker on both sides, did that. And then I seamed from the bottom up, up to the marker. And then I left the seaming yarn live um, because I wasn't, I just wanted to make sure that the sleeves, sleeve holes were gonna be the right size and there wasn't gonna be any issues. So then I went ahead and picked up for my sleeves. So what I did was I, right from the, seaming shoulder seam. I picked up 52 stitches this way, right to like basically led me close to the marker. And then I went ahead and picked up 52 stitches this way. So that way I was, I was sure I was going to get an even, an even number. Um, because if you were, if you're picking up around this way, I might end up not picking up, I'm picking up too many under the arm or something like that. Anyways, that was the way I did it. I just wanted it to be as accurate as possible. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was 104 stitches for my sleeves. And then I went ahead and closed that gap with the live yarn that I had left down here. I just stitched up to the armhole and closed the gap. And I did the same on the other side. And that is how I, how I knit my sweater. Um, for the sleeves, I just did five rounds of one by one ribbing. Um, yeah. I think that's the same as for the neckline as well. Anything else I want to say about this? This one's been a long one in the making. I think I started it to May of last year and I finished it April. It was almost exactly 11 months. <laughs> but as you know, if you're a returning viewer, I work on a lot of projects at one time. <laughs> I'm sorry if you can hear the squeaking of my couch. <laughs> it's very squeaky today. Um, Okay, so I think that's it for this finished object. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with it. Like I said, it shrunk, so it turned out a bit shorter, more cropped than I would have would have intended it to be. So it still works. That's why I, I didn't do the sleeves. I just decided, okay, this is gonna be a crop top with a the short sleeves and it's, it's nice for spring, maybe even summer, we'll see, um, on those cooler nights. But yeah, I really like it. I really love the details. It was a very, very enjoyable knit. And what I'm noticing now that I'm working on another uh, lace pattern, I haven't done a, a ton of lace. So this one was really nice because you basically, you know, you do your lace on the right side and then on the wrong side, it was just uh, some pearls and pearls and knits. So it wasn't difficult. The one I'm working on now, you actually do some lace on the back side as well. So that one's, I'm finding it a little more, a little more tricky. Um, 
yeah, I've restarted it several times. But anyways, I'm going to get into that later on. That's a new cast. Um, okay, so first finished object, but it's not my only one. Today, I also have a second finished object. I finished my partner's socks. <laughs> so these are just a vanilla sock that I did out of Drops Fable yarn, which is a self-patterning yarn. This is my first time using it. And then um, the balls, the Drops Fable balls are 50 grams. And I had exactly enough. So I literally, I knit these two at a time. So I literally knit uh, till I ran out of yarn. And then I used a, a um, Yusha Cheetah Merino sock yarn. I think it's like a 75% Merino, 25% nylon sock yarn to do the toes and the heels. I did a slip stitch heel, flapping gusset, and I knit them from the cuff down. Just my standard um, vanilla sock recipe, 72 stitches for, for my partner. For myself, I do 64. I don't know if you can hear that. That's my cat. He's bringing me something. <laughs> I don't know what he has, but sometimes if he has access to yarn, he'll bring me yarn. <laughs> I swear, it's like his way of, I think he's trying to barter to go outside because we don't let him outside anymore. And I shouldn't have said that because he knows that word. What'd you bring? Oh, you dropped it on the stairs. I don't know what you brought me. He either brings stuffies or a toy of some sort or yarn if he can get it. <laughs> He's been bringing up a bunch of acrylic balls of yarn. I'm like, where are you getting this from? And then I realized one of my totes was open slightly. Yes, hello. That's Pete. Um, okay, so yeah, I think I think that's it for, for they're just vanilla socks, like I said, nothing. Nothing too crazy, uh, but it was fun watching the patterns kind of emerge as you're knitting them. And because I knit from each end of the same ball, uh, the patterns kind of reversed, but like, whatever, can't tell. And uh, there's some fun pink and orange and blue speckles in this uh, contrast yarn that I used for the heels and toes. Yeah, so my partner will be happy to have these. I haven't let him wear them <laughs> because I, I wanted to keep them nice for the podcast, but now he can go ahead and wear them. Okay, so that's my second finished object. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I use a US1 2.25 millimeter needles to knit my socks. If you see me looking down, I'm sorry. It's just because I have notes down here. I have so many things to talk about today. I didn't want to forget anything. I'm just going to take a sip of my coffee. And today I'm drinking just a coffee um, out of my super wonky handmade mug <laughs> that I love. It's my bee mug. I don't know if you can see there's little bees. Bees and honeycomb. Yeah, my, my friend and I took a beginner hand building pottery class last year. And this was by far my favorite thing that we made in the class because it's so functional and I love it. Okay, so that's it for finished objects. Now I'm gonna move on to some works in progress. I'll give you updates on the works in progress that you're familiar with first. So I'll just start with this one. This one is housed in my own handmade project bag. I always have to say this, but I had help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, not a sewist by any means and my mom actually helped me make this bag and I love it and I'm not going to try and show the lining because it never shows up okay I'm gonna try. oh it kind of shows up today it's dark enough out so it's got these bees on the inside these gold bees and flowers it's pretty okay so housed in here is my night shift shawl which is a pattern by Andrea Mowry. It's a pretty popular pattern. I'm sure you've seen it before. So 
This is what I have so far. Whoa. Uh, the rows are getting pretty long, so it takes me quite a while to get through a row now. You can see I didn't do that much on it. The progress keeper shows you where I was last time. But I'm just doing mine up in two different colors. Uh, I think the original pattern calls for six different colors of spin cycle yarns. I am using Noro Curion, which is a 100% wool. And so I'm using the... A lighter color for the background and then a darker color for the mosaic stitches the foreground and I think it's turning out really nice um, super neutral it's exactly what I wanted I wanted something I could wear with with anything really that would go so this fits the bill and I'll just show you the the two yarns I'm using in the balls so these are the two colors This one has some browns and black and gray in it. And then this one's oh, very neutral, but it has some light browns and light gray as well. So yeah, not too, too much to report on that one. I am using a US 8 five mil millimeter needles to, to knit this. And I don't know. I don't know if I'm just gonna keep knitting until I run out of yarn. I can't remember how many balls I bought for this. Might be six or something like that. I might, yeah, I might just knit till I'm out. So it might end up pretty ginormous. We'll see. Okay, next up is a Cotswold Henley, which I'm making for my partner. Um, I'll pop in a picture of what the finished sweater looks like so I am knitting mine up out of cascade 220 heathers in the colorway olive heather and it's not going to show up nice it never does I don't know why but this color it's so much more vibrant than this <laughs> I don't know why it shows up this black gray but anyways it's a cool pattern it's got two different um stitch patterns in it so there's this like Henley ribbing, I think it's called, and then garter stitch ba or basket garter stitch or something. Or I forget the name, but anyways, it's two different patterns, which is kind of cool. So this is actually the back, but it's similar to the front at this point anyways. So I've separated, um, I knit up 17 inches. It's knit bottom up in the round and then you separate for front and back. So I've now separated. I've got my front on the, on a cord and then I'm working on the back part. And I've put in, you do a bit of armhole shaping here. You can see how it slants up. And now I just knit, I think for like 10 inches and then, uh, and then I do something. <laughs> I'm not sure what, cause I haven't read ahead. Cause I don't do that. One of my many faults. But yeah, I'm really enjoying it. It's um, very interesting to work on. And there's no rush to get this done. This will, well, my plan is to have this done for next fall or this coming fall, I guess. So I've got plenty of time. So I'm just taking my time, pick it up when I want to. And now that I'm at a part where I just am knitting, like knitting in pattern straight for 10 inches, I don't have to, I've memorized the pattern, so I'm good. So it's, yeah. Uh, what can I say about that? I'm using US 7 4.5 millimeter needles and I omit, oh yes, I omitted the tubular cast on and tubular bind offs because I just can't be bothered. I don't, I don't have to explain. <laughs> There's no judgment here, right guys <laughs> and gals? No judgment here. <laughs> um, yeah, and I did, oh, I'm knitting the size 47 and a half inches and I extended the body length by an inch. I think you were only supposed to knit for 16 inches, but I added to 17 and I got that number from measuring a hoodie that my partner likes to wear a lot. So I thought, well, it fits him nice and it's what he likes to wear. So I will just go by that measurement. Alrighty, so that brings us to the next whip. And oh, housed in this bag which is just a little uh, tote bag from 
unit, which is a shop, I believe in Toronto, what does it say? Toronto, yeah. I've ordered quite a, quite a bit of yarn from them. It's a local yarn shop in Toronto. And in there is my rocket tea, which I was hoping to have, hoping to have done. If I wouldn't have been spreading the love around and starting a whole bunch of new projects, I would have had this done for sure. I'm so close. Well, I say that, but it, it, it involves a lot of, um, um, what is that called? I cord bind offs. So I still have to do all of that, but sorry, my yarns are all tangled up. Here we go. So the progress keeper shows you where I was last time. So I did quite a bit. Um, yeah, it's so funny how stripey it looks on camera. Uh, when you see it in person, you can barely distinguish the different stripes. There, that's kind of more accurate. You can just barely tell that one's a mohair and one's not. But like when I hold it like that, it's very evident. <laughs> so I am knitting this up out of two different yarns by Felicity Yarn Studio. Um, they're both in the colorway Neapolitan, <laughs> which is so perfect because it's a mixture of like white, pink, and brown. Um, and yeah, so I'm using, um, alternating between the mohair silk and a merino, I think it's a sock yarn. Did I write it down? Didn't write it down. I can't remember. But I also forgot to mention that anything that I talk about, I will put links down below to project pages and makers and podcasters, etc. So you're free to check out <laughs> the things that I forget to mention. Um, but yeah, so this is the Rocket Tea by Tennis Lavallee. La Lavallee? She's a Canadian yarn dyer and designer based out of, I think she's in Quebec. She was in Montreal. I don't know if she's still in Montreal, but yeah. So I thought this is a great way to use up two, two skeins of yarn if you just have them kind of laying around and you're not sure what to make um, because it, it goes such a long way and it's knit on a US 4. 3.5 millimeter needles. I can't remember if that's what the called for needles are, but it's it's knit up loosely anyways. So it's nice light, light and airy. And I think it'll be cute for a little, like a little t-shirt to throw on in the summer. So yeah, that's, I think that's all I can say for that. I don't remember what size I'm making. Ugh, I can't remember. Sorry, I didn't write that down. But again, it'll be found on my project page. My first new project is something I had the pattern in my queue for a really long time and I've been wanting to make it and I think I just didn't. Firstly, I didn't think I had the skills to accomplish it. It's a crochet project. Um, but I don't know, like, like knitting with knitting, I just kind of jump into things. If I see something I really like, I'm going to make it. And if that means that I'm going to force myself to learn new skills, that's what's going to happen because <laughs> that's just what I do. Um, so I had this pattern. It's called the Persian Tiles Crochet Blanket. It's by Janie Crow. You may have heard of her. I know Andrea from Fruity Knitting made one of her uh, really intricate flower blankets a few years ago, I want to say. Um, yeah. Anyways, I can't, I can't remember the name of that blanket that she made, but it's Persian tiles blanket. I'm going to pop in a picture. I also want to preface this with saying that I, this has, this is in no way related to Justin Bieber. <laughs> For those of you who have seen him, there was a picture of him wearing a Persian tiles blanket, crocheted blanket at some kind of award thing after party or something. I don't even remember. But anyways, he was pictured wearing it. It was plastered all over Instagram, was everywhere, which is great. Great for Janie Crow, right? Getting her, um, her name out there and, you know, maybe boosting sales and her notoriety and stuff like that. Um, but that's not why I started making it. 
Uh, I guess it was a bit of a reminder that, hey, you have it in your queue and you've like loved it forever. So the original, um, the original blanket was knit up in, I think this was the original colorway. Oops, I'm gonna give away the pattern here. Um, so yeah, a bunch of blues and orange and red. And then there was the Persian, oh, sorry, the Eastern Jewels version, which is the one that I really wanted to make. So I'll pop in a picture of that version. I could not find a kit for that version. Um, so I went with my second choice, which is the one that I'm making. And it's called the Sandalwood colorway version, I guess. So initially when I saw this, I was like, oh, that looks so pretty. I really love all those um, coral colors and browns is what I thought was in it. But when I look up close now at the picture, I can tell that that's, well, actually, no, it still looks brown. The edges, like all the pieces, that's actually purple. It looks brown. So anyways, I feel like I was a little bit misled with the colors. <laughs> I guess they're the colors that I got are not typically my colors, but anyways, I'll show you what I have and I have done a bit of a modification to it. So this was a kit, like I said, I got it um, from marymaxim.ca, not affiliated with anybody. Anything that I mention here is just things that I, that I liked. Um, so it was very affordable. I think I, I got it during a time when there was free shipping. Uh, so the kit itself wasn't on sale, but they do regular, regular sales I, because I'm now getting all of the emails about it. Um, it is acrylic yarn. I don't normally um, knit with acrylic yarn anymore other than for gifts for people. But um, I don't know. I figured once I had the pattern, I could remake it in in colors that I would love to have in my house and with yarns that I appreciate a little more. Um, not to dis not to dis acrylics. I just for myself, from an environmental perspective, I prefer to knit with um, natural fibers. That's just my preference. So I've made quite a few uh, hexagons now I'll show you there's so in this version there's three different they're all they're the same pattern but they're just different colors and I haven't woven in all my ends although I have been weaving in a lot as I go which is which is kind of nice so there's one there's two there you can see the purple now eh? <laughs> So what I've done is there's a whole bunch of blue that's supposed to be in here too. And I was like, no, no, can't have that. So I've taken out the blue and I've, I've substituted brown. So here, whoop, right here should have been blue. And I've put brown in there. Everywhere it said blue, I put brown. And you can really see in this one, as all of this part was supposed to be blue. So that's a few of the, of the, oh, so they're octagons, not hexagons. A few of the octagons that I've made. And then you make these little kind of filler squares that go in between. There's two different versions of those. These are them. And then you have to make a bunch of little triangles. And I think there's, Three different versions this is just one i haven't done the other two yet i'm showing you the right side yes so it it looks complicated doesn't it like you would think oh my gosh like that looks really complicated it so isn't i am not a master crocheter i can count on one hand how many crochet projects i've done over the last like five years i think i started crocheting five years no that's not true because I made a blanket a long time ago my very first crochet project was a daisy blanket that I was like I'm making that <laughs> I don't know how to crochet but I'm gonna make it 
Um, and then I've definitely, like my skills have gotten better over time for sure, just with, just with practice. But yeah, I haven't made very many crochet things. So if I can do this, I'm sure, I'm sure a beginner can do this. The, the pattern directions are very clear. They're very, you know, step by step. Um, trying to think if there were any things I had issues with. Probably the most complicated part is doing these. Uh, just the way that I find like the way that she explained them. Luckily, there's a picture that kind of shows you along like there's a lot of pictures along with the steps. So I found that really helpful. It's not complicated. It's just a trouble. Or wait, is that what we call them? Triple? Double crochet? Triple, triple crochet or treble crochet in US terms. Um, and you're just wrapping it around another stitch down here. So it's like, it looks complicated, but it's, it's not. Once you figure out what you're supposed to do, it's not complicated. Um, so yeah, it's just a lot of single crochets, double crochets, half double crochets, and triple crochets. I think that's literally all it is. And whenever I get stuck on something or like when I started doing this and I was like, oh, how, cause pfft, I don't crochet enough to remember the stitches. Honestly, I have to, I can do a single crochet and a, no, I can do a double crochet with no problems. And then I'm always like, how do you do the single again? <laughs> I look everything up because I just don't do it regularly enough. Um, but this is helping, like hopefully it's getting ingrained in me now how to do the different stitches. And yeah, I think it's gonna be really pretty once it's done. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it. I might gift it, I might keep it. I don't know. I have visions of making my own version. Um, and I have an eye, on, I have my eye on a particular kit that I wanted. Oh, yeah, they're, they're so expensive though. Blanket kit, like if you want to make it out of wool, um, like hand dyed wool. <laughs> Blanket kits can be very, very pricey. So this was quite affordable. Did I mention the price? It was $99 Canadian plus tax. So I think it was like $115 or something, $114. Um, but like I said, they constantly have they have lots of sales that happen like regularly so you can get it for 25 percent off 50 sometimes 50 percent off so like 50 dollars it comes with the kit comes with all the yarn you need and the pattern does not come with any hooks so i did go ahead and buy some some hooks uh so i had a set of Lika driftwood hooks i don't know where they went anyways they're beautiful and I bought them on sale a while a little while ago and they're really pretty but I find that they do not um they stick or they catch I don't know I was just having problems with it so I ordered some aluminum ones of all this all the different sizes and those have been so much better plus they're a little more ergonomic they have like a, a com comfort grip handle on them they're just I think they're just better anyways so yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I have not been feeling well basically the whole month on and off. Um, again, sinus issues, nothing, nothing major, I don't think. But so I don't know why, but whenever I'm not feeling well or my head feels really heavy and fog, foggy and stuff like that, I just reach for crochet. It just, it comforts me. It's like my comfort, my comfort hobby. Um, I don't know why knitting isn't that for me. Cause it's not like I struggle with knitting or anything. I don't know if it's the fine stitches. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what it is. It's very strange, but yeah, crochet is totally my comfort. So that's why I have so many done <laughs> because I'm not feeling well. So I just, yeah, reach for crochet. All right. So that's one new project on my hooks I guess or hook um next I have where's that housed here I think housed in this adorable little fox bag by my needle crafts 
which is a Canadian bag maker, I will put a link down below, is a new summer top. So this is the Bolin by Layla Raven. I'll pop in a picture of the finished, finished top. It's really pretty, it, really pretty to me anyway. Uh, <laughs> this is the project that I mentioned with the lace on it that for whatever reason, I can't grasp and I have had to start over. That's always the case with me, I think. I start over a lot. Uh, so I finally got some lace going here. I don't know if you can see. And then this is just stockinette, so it's curling, so you can't really tell, but it's just a, just a start, but this is like literally like my fourth try, I think. I think I'm good now. Got it. Got it going. Um, but yeah, it's a really interesting top. It, the construction is, it's knit in four panels. So you do like a, a front right panel, a front left panel, a back left panel and a back right panel. And then, um, so I think they're knit separately. No, they're not knit separately. So you do, let's say you do the, the front right panel and then you pick up along the edge of it to do your next panel. And then I don't know what happens after that. I don't know if you pick up and do around, I'm not sure. But anyways, it's kind of an interesting construction. And so, I'm working on the back left panel, I think. But basically it's gonna go like this. So you knit this way, but it's gonna go this way. So the lace goes across here, which I think is really interesting. And which also means that your row gauge becomes extremely important. Well, not that it's not always important, but normally if your row gauge is a little bit off, you can just add length to something and that's not a problem. Um, I guess in this one too, this, yeah, I'm gonna have to add length anyways, but, or width is basically what you're adding because you're going to be knitting this way. So yeah, I my stitch gauge is dead on, which is awesome with the recommended needles but my row gauge is like super off. So I'm definitely gonna have to add in. It's too, um, I'm knitting too tightly my rows. So I'm gonna have to add in some, some extra repeats of the lace and then just to widen it so that it fits. But there's a lot of positive ease on this one. I think it's 54 inches. I have a 45 inch bust for reference and the top, if you're on gauge, is 54 inches around at that size. So that's quite a bit of ease. Uh, so if it's a little bit smaller, I'll, I'll add in some length. Like I'm gonna do some calculation. I haven't done it yet because I just started, but I'll do some calculations to see how much I need to add in and how much ease I want it to have. But yeah, it's, it's, it's been interesting for sure. Oh, and I'm knitting it up out of, I've rolled it into a ball, but I'm knitting it out out of the called for yarn, which is Quince & Co Sparrow, which is 100% linen. This is my first time knitting with 100% linen. It starts off, it feels so ropey and like just not that pleasant, but just from working, like just working with it and knitting it, it softened up already. And I've heard that when you wash and wear it, it softens up even more. So that's pretty cool. It's very see-through the way. <laughs> I'll definitely have to wear something underneath it. And this is a fingering weight, I believe. Fingering weight. And I am using US4 3.5 millimeter needles. Yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say about this one. It's just in its infancy. Oh, the color weight is penny. It's pretty spot on, isn't it? Looks like a penny. Very pretty. Yeah. Oh, there you can see the lace. Ooh. So cool. Lace is like magic, especially when you block it. It opens up. It looks so cool. Okay. So that's another new cast on. Another My Needle Craft, My Needle Craft bag. This is the B bag. Is my first hand spun project. 
So those, um, those of you who have watched my podcast before may have heard me talk about my spinning. I just started spinning in February and with a drop spindle and I'm very much enjoying it. And I am finally using the yarn I spun up. So this is, oh, where are you? This is some um, Ashford Coriadale fiber in the colorway toffee, if I can untangle it. Oh my gosh, okay, here we go. And this is how it's knitting up. So I'm making a pair of socks for Carrie of My Wool Mittens Sock Spin Along 23. That's where you spin up your own yarn and then knit socks from it. And that is basically the push that I needed <laughs> to finally start learning how to spin. So it's been a very interesting process. So you'll see I have two colors here. So on the top, um, just, just along the ribbing there is another Ashford Coriadale fiber that I spun up. It's one of my earlier spins. Um, so it's a bit thicker and not quite as consistent as the toffee colored, the rust colored one. So I put it right at the top. I think it looks kind of cute. Um, I was aiming to get a fingering weight yarn, but that's <laughs> probably over ambitious on my part, just being a new spinner. Uh, so I think I've ended up, I don't have one of those wraps per inch to determine the thickness, but I think I've ended up with something more like a sport weight. So, um, to adjust for that, I, I know how many stitches I, and what size needles I use to make DK weight socks. And I know what size I use and the stitch count for fingering my fingering weight socks. So I just kind of split the difference and used a US 1.5, I think. Yep. Two. Oh my gosh. Did I write that down? I think it's a 2.5, yes. So it's a US 1.5 1, 1 needles, 2.5 millimeter needles to knit these socks. And I think they're turning out a good, a good size. They look pretty like, like the right size anyways. I haven't tried it on yet, but yeah. So I'm pretty proud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so, it's so satisfying to to learn a new craft and then like put it to use. I don't know. I just, it's like magic to me. So I'm in awe of it. I'm not trying to be braggy here either. So I hope it doesn't come off that way. I'm just literally in awe that, you know, it's possible to take fluff and turn it into yarn. Like it's just, I don't know, it's magical to me. But anyways, yes. So that is that. Um, I think that's it for, or new cast ons. Yeah. But that's enough. I'm supposed to be doing. Ugh, anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm not supposed to do anything. I do what makes me happy. That's what we do, right? That's why we do these things, hopefully, it's to make ourselves happy. Okay, so now we're going to look at all the rest of the projects I have on my needles. I don't even know how many there are. I didn't count them, but it'll be interesting to see. So uh, let's do the ones that I've shown recently that are still, you know, the more active ones. So I didn't do any work on it in the past, whatever, <laughs> since my last episode. I can't remember how long it's been. I know it's been a little while. It's because I haven't been feeling well. Um, so found in the Shetland book by Marie Wallen is the Samfrey. And I have been working on this for quite a while. I don't know that I'm going to get it done for the end of our, uh, our make along, but that's okay. I finished this one. <laughs> so I did, I did finish something for it. This one's a bonus. Um, so the Samfrey, I'll just 
remind everybody I have finished. No, I haven't. I haven't finished it. I've done a lot of the body. <laughs> Isn't it cool how like up close, I don't know, it looks different. And then when you pull it back, it's like, you can see the pattern a little better. This one I love. It's such a muted pattern. I love the colors in this. So this is the body I'm knitting at bottom up. I converted it to knit in the round, although it calls the pattern calls for you to knit it flat in pieces and then seam because I didn't want to seam. I don't like seaming. I just, I don't like seaming. Like, and I especially didn't like seaming color work. I find it really messy and it's hard for me to figure out where to put my needle. And I just, maybe it just comes with practice. I just haven't had enough practice of it, but I just don't like seaming. So I did convert this to knit in the round and then I got stuck because I'm like, what do I do now? Where do I put my armholes? <laughs> so I then, I then moved on to work on the sleeves because I figured, and I am knitting them flat. I figured if I knit the sleeves, so they're knit from the cuff up. Yes, cuff up. Once you're done at the top, you know, this width will tell me how deep my armhole needs to be. So that'll help me hopefully for the armhole placement. That's what I'm hoping. So yeah, I haven't really done all that much, but I have some, some ribbed cuffs and a little bit of color work on the sleeves. And I'm knitting them two at a time just because I wanted to make sure that, well, it's just easier that way because you have to do um, increasing as you go. And uh, it just makes it easier when I know that I'm doing whatever I'm doing on one, I do on the other. So it just, from my mind, it works, works better. Um, so that is my Samfrey. Uh, I will say the Samfrey has a lot of catch float, uh, float catching in it. Ooh, cat hair. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't anticipate the number of floats I would have to be catching in this one. Which also makes um, knitting in the round nicer. Because when you knit flat, you have to catch floats on the back side, on the purl side. And for me, that's just, just a little more tricky. I do not mind purling. I'm not one of those people who hates purling. I don't mind purling at all, um, but catching floats while purling is a pain to me. That I mind a little more. Okay, I'm just making these precarious piles of things. What's next? Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else that I've shown recently? Oh, maybe my blanket. Sweet. And then there's a few I haven't shown in a long time. Okay, so I have a Battenberg blanket on the go, a scrappy Battenberg blanket. That's a pattern by Sandra Paul. It's a crochet pattern. And this I just work on whenever I feel like it. I'm using all of my superwash scraps for this and then alternating with uh, some undyed natural cream color, I think. It's also a superwash too though that I ordered from Acme Fibers, which is a place in Canada out on the East Coast, I think. They sell packages of undyed fibers, not fibers, yarns. So you can get, uh, you can get mohair, you can get uh, like fingering weight, you can get thicker. I think they're all super washed though. I didn't, I don't seem to recall seeing any that weren't. So just a heads up there. But it works for this one because all of these are super washed. So it's, it's a pretty heavy blanket actually. Yeah, it's fun. It's a fun project and it helps me use up scraps. And to be honest, I don't knit with super wash. Like I don't knit garments with super wash yarns at, at all anymore. Um, mostly because well two reasons really and this is no shade to anybody who does I don't want anyone to think that I'm judging you this is just totally my own personal like this is what I do um but like I 
do not judge others for doing what they want. You know, we're all in this, we all do what we want and, and hopefully we're all having fun while we do it. So um, the reason that I don't typically knit with superwash yarns anymore is because they stretched on me. <laughs> so I knit pretty much exclusively with superwash yarns when I started knitting um, or started knitting seriously back in 2015. No, 2017, sorry, it's been like six years now. Um, and all of those garments have stretched on me and I'm just really unsatisfied with them. Uh, so there's that. And then there's also, I don't know, I just, I really like the feel of non-treated wool. I just really like it. And um, I think from an environmental perspective, again, it's just, you know, natural 100% natural is always the best way to go. That's just my opinion. But anyways, so that's my Battenberg blanket. And I can't remember. Oh, I'm using a three millimeter crochet hook to knit that. If that means anything to anybody. Okay, now some, some projects I haven't shown in a little while. So housed in this super cat hair covered <laughs> bag by Blue Rabbit O's, polar bear bag that I love, is a Christmas stocking that I'm working on. Or, yes, not working, actively working on. I put it away for, for now. I don't know, I'm just very seasonally motivated, so. So this is a, this is my second Christmas stocking. I've already completed the one, or mostly completed, I have to line, but I've completed the knitting on the stocking for our youngest daughter, Lily, and now I'm working on a stocking for my stepdaughter, Abby. So this is what it looks like. I can't remember the woman's name who designs these, but I'll pop it in. She's got a bunch of different patterns of Christmas stockings. Yeah, it's it's a really fun knit. Once I get going on it, it's, yeah, I really enjoy it. Um, I just, yeah, when it's not snow, when there's no snow on the ground, I don't wanna, I don't wanna knit this stuff. But when that first snow comes, whether it even sticks around or not, then I start getting in the mood. So that's that. And then I have another crochet project that I started last year and it was supposed to be for a make along that Sarah from It Is A Sarah podcast, which I absolutely love. I love her aesthetic. She likes brown a lot. I just, I don't know. I find everything she makes really pretty. Um, she was running a, hmm, I think it's like It Is A Sarah Flora Mal or something, Flora Mal. So you're supposed to knit or crochet plants flowers, plants. So I started making, okay, firstly, can you see up here, <laughs> this pathetic fern that is admittedly doing way better than it was. I had it down to no word of a lie. I think it had one frond on it left. The rest had died and it's come back. So there's hope. There's hope for your ferns. Just <laughs> You just have to give it some TLC and learn for myself. I had to learn that ferns don't like to dry out. <laughs> so don't let them dry out. Keep them watered. <laughs> um, so I either overwater everything or underwater things. And so I was, I was, this is a geranium. You can't see the flowers, but it's actually flowering right now. That's a geranium that I almost killed. Uh, I have two more. I have learned that geraniums like to be dry. They like to things to dry out between waterings. So yeah, don't overwater. Anyways, so once you start to learn what plants actually need, <laughs> you can take better care of them. And it's not hard. It's just for myself, it's not hard. I just have to take the time to learn. I just water whenever I feel like it. I'd be like, oh, this feels a little dry. I'll give it some water. But really you have to, you have to spend a little more effort on it. So anyways, this thing was almost dead. I was down to one frond and I was like, okay, 
like almost about to give up on house plants. I'm like, I just can't do it. The other thing is we have five cats, so we have to keep everything up. I can't have any plants near, like geraniums are toxic to cats. So they like, you can't let them get at them. Um, I don't know that the fern would be, but ferns look good hanging because they need to hang. Um, but yeah, so like my, it's just limited in here <laughs> where I can put plants. So I was like, oh, I'm going to make a fern. <laughs> so here's, here's an example of a frond that I've made. Uh, wow, it's turning up more blue green. It's, it's more yellow green in real life. It's funny how the colors change on here. So that's, that's one frond. Basically, it's a bunch of fronds that I've made. And then you take some um, wire. I forget the name of it. Basically, you take some, um, it's a really thin wire and you just thread it through the center and then that gives it structure. And then you can like, okay, these look really bad. They have to be blocked because they're totally curling in. But then you can like bend it and like, you know, some of them see in the back, like there's some that stick up and then come down. So you can mold them to make them look more realistic. So once you thread wire through all of these, all of the things that you make, then um, I just bought a big pot. I don't know if I still have it here. Oh, I think I brought it downstairs. So I bought a big terracotta pot and then just a, a recycled styrofoam ball that fits in the pot. And then you just poke all your little fronds into the ball, styrofoam, and let them hang out. And then hopefully looks like a, you know, somewhat realistic fern that never dies on you. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that was why I started it. That's funny. I do want to finish it. I think it'd be cute in the basement, you know, somewhere where there's no light kind of thing. Um, and I forgot to mention it's housed in this beautiful yellow petal handmade bag. Oh my gosh. Which is another Canadian um, bag maker. I think her name is Penelope and she is based out of the East Coast. She makes wonderful bags. This bag is so well made. It's lined. It's got pockets. It's got little matching pockets in there. It's just really pretty. It's got a detachable little um, strap. And she also threw in when I placed my order, she gave me this adorable little handmade bookmark that you put over your page in your book. Isn't that pretty? I should be using that. I don't know why that's in there. I'm going to leave it out and put it on my book. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. And now one more project, I think. One more project. This is a, I haven't shown this one in a really long time. So this will be my longest term project that I have on the needles, I think. Longest term non- blanket project. So housed, okay, firstly, housed in this beautiful bag that my mom got me in Ecuador is my Bersay dress. Yes, I'm knitting a dress. Fingering weight dress. Oh my gosh. What was I thinking? Okay. So I'll pop in a picture of what the finished dress looks like. And this is my version. Oh, colors are not showing up very nicely. So it's uh, four different colors. This is like a, a gray brown kind of, I, it's more gray actually. Uh, there's like a light teal, turquoisey, dark turquoise, and then a yellow. And they're all Brooklyn Tweed Loft. Um, it was an expensive purchase for a dress because, <laughs> because you need a lot of that contrast color or the main color, sorry. Um, yeah, I've basically made a top 
and I'm still debating like do I want to make the full dress I know people have said yes just do it <sighs> I'm just not sure I'd wear it I feel like I'd get more wear out of it as a tunic it's got cute little pockets if you see the picture um, that I popped in there's like little pockets I think that'd be really cute on a like a little tunic with leggings anyways yeah so this is my longest term project and I really do need to figure out what I'm gonna do with it I haven't worked on it in a while and it's like either rip it out or finish it one way or another it's also housing my two barber cords which I could desperately use along with my chowgu cord that I could also use <laughs> to cast on something new anyways um yeah so we'll see we'll see what I do with this one and it's like I said it's it's fingering weight yarn and I think I'm knitting it on if I'm not mistaken it might be like US 2 2 point 75 millimeter needles really small pretty tight gauge the other thing that I'm hesitant about is I've heard uh, pretty mixed reviews about Brooklyn Tweed Loft and its durability and so like if I end up making spending all this time making a dress only to have it like fall apart on me I'll be quite upset so I don't know I don't know we'll see <laughs> I'll keep you posted okay and I think that is it for everything that I have every single project that I have in the works um, with the exception of some embroidery and cross stitch projects I didn't I did not pull those out so anything yarn related that's it so a lot that's more than I expected so what about you what's your number I would love it if you'd leave it down below make me feel better here come on I know there's definitely people out there who have more projects that they're working on than I do um, but I think probably a significant a number of people have less than I do as well <laughs> I have quite a bit um, but I'd love to know your number and um, yeah, because, because, you know, I don't have enough projects on my needles. I went ahead and ordered yarn for more. My gosh. So I don't usually talk about acquisitions. I just stopped doing that. However, when I have a plan for something, I will talk about that. So I went ahead on Easter weekend, Lichen and Lace, which is a Canadian uh, yarn dyer out on the East Coast. Uh, they were doing this promotion where if you could find a little Easter egg on their website um, if you click on it you would get a discount off your purchase and I was like hmm I have been wanting to make the Lunenberg sweater by Amy Christoffers for quite some time I've seen so many beautiful versions of it um, the original I have absolutely loved um, I'll pop in a picture of what that looks like so you can see what I'm talking about um, but yes and I was kind of kind of wanting to knit it out of the original called for yarn which is like an unlaced rustic heather sport I think that's the name of it uh, which is a non superwash yarn I think it's the only one they have like an unlaced I think the rest are all superwash but anyways it's a non superwash yarn sport weight um, but I didn't know this now that I now that I have it I could have read up on it I was stupidly didn't read up on it it's a single ply <laughs> so again with single plies um, single plies are really great for things like um, shawls things that you want to be drapey things that you might not you know might not wear quite as much or as ruggedly as a sweater or other garments or accessories. So durability of single ply is what kind of worries me. Um, and the, I think the loft, the Brooklyn Tweed loft, I think it's a single ply. When I look at it, I can't, 
I can't tell, but anyways, I think that might have something to do with it. So anyways, back to my story. I purchased, oh no, I went on the website and I was like, that's it. I'm gonna look. If I find an Easter egg on the Rustic Heather Sport web pages, like if only on there, if I find it, I will purchase the yarn and I did find it on there. <laughs> it's like it read my mind. <laughs> so I got 20% off my order and I was like, okay, hey, yeah, totally, <laughs> totally ordering it. Uh, so I went ahead and ordered. I'm, I got this, all of the same colors that were called in the original. So all the same contrast colors, but I switched out the main color. So these are my colors. So this will be my main, this beautiful, I think it's called walnut, black walnut. It's looking ready there. It's not red in person, but it's like a dark brown. And then the contrast colors are birch, it's beautiful kind of natural looking gray. Um, shrub, which is like a yellowy green. Sky just like a turquoise which actually reminds me of the color from that uh, dress I'm knitting and pollen beautiful yellow it does look like pollen really pretty really pretty I do love that her colors are very nature inspired I appreciate that very much uh, yeah, so this is a very rustic yarn. It actually reminds me very much of the uh, Briggs and Little yarn, which I didn't even mention, that I'm using to knit up my uh, Christmas stockings. And it's the same weight, and it's a single ply as well. And I wonder if she gets her yarn milled at the same place. Because it just it's just so similar, the colors are beautiful though Briggs and Little colors are pretty standard like they're not I don't know not as beautiful I'm not dissing their yarn but it's just not quite as pretty so anyways that will be a new cast on at some point not I don't think anytime too soon I need to I need to clear some needles off <laughs> anyways I, I, I literally don't have any cords left so I'll be making that at some point maybe in the fall and then I placed an order for some cotton yarn because I really want to make, I'll pop in a picture of the bags I want to make. Um, I don't know, the, I don't know, I'm just like totally into this crochet granny square stuff. Never thought I'd see the day, but here I am with all the crochet granny squares. And I, again, I think I might have to blame um, Sarah. It is a Sarah podcast because she's always showing off all of her of her beautiful crochet projects and Yana as well from Finnish Knitting Stories. She's a huge influence on me as well. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm super easily influenced. It doesn't take much over here. So yes, I've ordered some cotton yarns to make a, that flower. I think it's called a sunburst granny square bag or something like that. And then my daughter was asking me if I could make her a cardigan out of out of those squares so I frantically was like yes I try to try and try to tone down my excitement I don't want her to sense how excited I am that she's actually asked me to make her something because she never asks me for anything anymore um so I'm like don't want to scare her away <laughs> must act calm but inside I'm like yes <laughs> I get to make something for her so um are you guys like that too do you do you have if you have kids do, do they ever ask you for stuff and if so do you get super excited or are you kind of like uh, I don't want to make you anything <laughs> I don't know my kid doesn't ask for anything anymore so I get super excited anyway so yeah she'd like a granny square uh card gun. so I found a pattern online that I think I'm going to use actually I think it was a tutorial from YouTube there's a few patterns online but um no, I don't, I don't, there was, I don't know. I, I didn't like them for some reason, I think. Anyways, um, so we'll have to choose colors. I ordered, this, I ordered a bunch of yarn before she even mentioned this. So the colors that I, that I ordered are very earthy. Uh, lots of yellows and browns and rusts and stuff like that. Um, 
so I don't know if she's gonna like that but we'll see we'll see what she chooses I can always order more hmm. yeah so I've got that coming and that's uh that's it that is it spinning I haven't really done much spinning because um other than for my socks which I showed you I want to get the socks done before like the spin for the socks I'm almost done um I want to get that done before I start spinning my specialty fibers and I did get a second month of the long way homestead fiber breed study um it came and this month I got I hope I'm not spoiling anything for anybody but I think I'm talking about it way after the fact so I think it should be okay but I got um eastern Frisian I think it was I can't find where I put it somewhere in this disastrous mess of my living room right now um but yeah so it, it literally like I got it and I was like is this like is this like polyester polyfill like it just doesn't look like like wool from a sheep at all it's very uh very is the word rustic I don't know it's rough and it just it just doesn't look like sheep wool at all but anyways we'll see how that spins I think the recommendation for it was to to use it for like outer garments or for like rugs and stuff I don't think it's meant to wear next to skin but that's okay it's all experience I'm just looking forward to the experience of spinning different fibers and uh and sharing that with you guys okay so that's it for that I I know this is a long one um so I'm gonna say I have two podcast recommendations but I'm gonna save them for the next podcast because I'm just gonna I feel like this one's getting way out of hand so <laughs> I'll do that next time in the share the love segment and so I think I'm just gonna end it there I don't really have any life stuff to talk about I haven't been doing much like I said I've been ill so I'm spending a lot of time crocheting crocheting and and occasionally knitting and uh watching lots of sports okay so we got cable <laughs> for the first time um I've never had cable Ugh, I don't think I've ever ever had cable in my adult life like myself um you know I had it at home when I was growing up but not not I never just never bothered and now we have it because my partner really likes to watch uh hockey and baseball so now so now it's like 24 7 sports in here <laughs> non-stop and sometimes it's like hockey and baseball are on at the same time so we're switching back and forth <laughs> And I was, if you knew me before, I was never a sports fan. I'm not, I was never into it at all. But I will admit that I'm, you know, I can root for the teams. Um, I get into it now. So it's not, it's not terribly bad. Uh, but you do realize, I don't know, there's not a lot on cable. Like when you start flipping through channels and stuff and like, what is there to watch? I don't know. I'd much rather be either listening to an audiobook or watching uh, one of my fellow, you know, knitting podcasters I just yeah I don't know I don't have too much use for cable to be honest but anyways that's my update <laughs> that's my life update cabled <laughs> or sports taking over my world um our snow is gone and we have a few little crocuses that are starting to pop up um I'll pop in a picture because they're not blooming today because it's so raining very very gray we're supposed to get rain all weekend and it's a cold rain which is like the worst I don't mind rain but when it's cold ugh, verging on like flurries not my favorite yeah so oh my mom's back from Ecuador so I got to see her last weekend which was so nice um yeah and it sounds like she's gonna try and make it to some of the knit nights that we have now also I will say this again if you are in the Sudbury area and you're looking for a knit group um, or a crochet group or a making group whatever um, we do have a regular meeting every every two weeks um, so if you'd like to like to find out more about that just you know send me either an email or you can message me over on Instagram and all my contact information is down below 
so yeah, we'd love to have you join in. And I think I shall leave it there. And I want to wish you all a wonderful next three weeks. And I hope it's filled with wonderful weather and lots and lots of making. Happy making. Bye.